hi everyone today we are going to see the trade union movement in india and various trade unions in india and structure of trade union so the trade union in india to discuss about the trade union movement in india first of all we have to talk about the labor movement in india because the the labor movement is a early stage of trade union movement so the labor movement in india has been started as in any other industrialized countries it is a response to challenge thrown by the modern industrialization or the modern factory system of production so the moment is inevitable this labor moment is inevitable because it is a reaction to the modern industrialization which has been coupled with the unfair labor practices such as employment of women and children for the heavy and manual work and intensification of labor prolonged working hours low wages and insanitary and unsafe working condition these are the causes of the rise of this labor movement so let us see what are the basic definition of trade union movement and the labor movement or is trade union and labor movement this the trade union on the labor movement the labor movement is is for the labor whereas the trade union is by the labor so trade labor movement is for the labor for the welfare of the labor it has been initialized or initiated by the reform is social reformers or philanthropists in the society that are non workers in the society has been revolted against the exploitation of the workmen with the employers like bengal ss bengali who has who is a, a revolt who has a, a started agitation against these uh, labor practices against the unfair labor practices for the welfare and well being of this uh, workers on uh, and in the similar way this trade union is nothing but it is formed by the workers itself for their own welfare or uh, to protect their own interest so that is the basic difference between labor movement and the trade union movement let us see some of the definitions of trade unionism trade union so according to web the trade union is a continuous association of wage workers wage earners for the purpose of maintaining or improving the conditions of the of their living work, uh, working life and definition can then could formulated or it has given a definition a trade union is continuous organization of workers established for the purpose of protecting or improving through collective action the economic and social status of its members this is a uh, definition which is given and the next definition g h d cole he has given the trade union means an association of workers in one or more professions carried on mainly for the purpose of protecting and advancing the members economic interest in connection with their daily work and if you compare the all these definitions in this definitions we have used the web has used the expression of wage earners and colin dunkard has used the expression of workers and employers employees all these expressions are uh, are similar are same they are they are targeting to they are they means only the workmen or the labor and the wage owners and the workers and employees are same the they have the, the way of expression the wording is different but the meaning is same they want to talk about the age owner age owners or workers or employees are same and coming to the next comparison if you see the similarities between web and cole definitions association and organization they means similar there is no material difference in the uh, in the expression or this in the wording which has given by given by this web and cole they want to see the group or association they will be working towards a common interest that is what association or the organization there is no material definite difference between in their expression and the next definition a trade union can be defined as an organized association of workers in a trade or profession formed to further their rights and interests in india the trade union was all the trade unions are registered under the trade unions act of 
let us see some of the characteristics of trade union then we'll go deep into the history of trade union characteristics of trade union the trade union is from the definition we have seen the trade union is an association of employees like for example teachers association doctors association film uh, artists association weavers mine workers and so on the trade union is essentially an association of employees belonging to a particular class of employment or the profession or an industry or trade so the second characteristic is it's a voluntary association nobody according to it is it is joining into any of the trade union it's up to the opinion of the worker or this employee nobody is compelled or forced to join any of the particular union because it is already already mentioned it was clearly mentioned in the fundamental rights of our constitution according to the article 19 it was clearly we have the freedom of association freedom of association means we can we have all the freedom to any individual as a citizen of uh, india have uh, have a right or have a right and the freedom of association to join any of the uh, union as per his will nobody is is cannot be compelled or forced to join any union and that is the next and the permanent body a trade union is usually a permanent body members may come and go but the union remains common interest they all uh, they will be working towards the common interest like uh, job security better pay and working conditions and uh, and this is what these are the some of the causes where they form trade unions to look up these issues better payments and uh, job security and all these things next definition is collective action when when even when an individual have an issue with the uh, employ employer the matter is sorted by the intervention of trade union employees are able to initiate collective action to solve any problem concerning to a particular person or his particular worker or a employees employer employees or employee even single if there is a problem with the management even with the single individual or the all the workers this the trade union will be intervening and they'll be they'll be expressing the on behalf of all the workers or also on behalf of the employee employee and they'll be putting forth the issue of the individual employee or employees before the management and try to resolve the issue with the, in an amicable manner report with the management the trade union seeks uh, to improve relationship between employee and employer the officials of the trade union hold talks with the members of the management concerning the problems of the employees in order to find an amicable solution it is thus possible for the uh, for the this uh, the, um, the trade unions to have a better rapport with the management members of the trade union so need and purpose of the trade union why we need a tra uh, trade union why we need to join in your trade union the purpose is for the better wages better working conditions protection against exploitation protection against victimization here the victimization means beating abusing or anything any any uh, illegal thing or anything exactly that hurts the individual so providing welfare measures promote industrial peace take up collective bargaining on any regarding any issue uh, in which involves uh, individual employee or employees we look after the interest of the trade these are the main purpose why we join into the trade union so trade union in india so we will be coming to the trade unionism in india so before discussing about the advent of this trade union we'll talk about a small brief of a labor movement because the labor movement is has paved a path for the trade union movement in india so the labor movement in india so as we said which has been started uh, as a response to the as a response to the unfair lab unfair labor practices of the employers in in the in the industries so in the decade of 1851 to 16 which is uh, this is a decade uh, the most five sectors has been in the, uh, in in boom they have started industrialization like uh, 
cotton industries has been established jute industries plantation coal mines and railways these are the most important industries that came up in this decade in 1851 to 60 so during this time what happened this is the uh, this is the, the decade in which this is a moment in which the industries came up in industrialization took place in the country and this not only industrialization took place this industrialization has been coupled with illegal, illegal labor practices illegal labor practices unfair labor practices i can say like low wages and slavery and all these things to prolong the working hours making the people to work for long hours all this took place in at this time so so these at this moment after setting up the textile industry jute mills and laying up railways in 1951 during this decade if you say 51 to 60 the work atrocities started started to come into light so in this industry they have they have started a, a, a too many legislations the british government has uh, took up a too many legislations in this era of uh, in this in this uh, decade like in 1951 to 60 this gave rise to labor problems to tackle this problems what are the problems which we have discussed like the prolonged working hours women and children uh, putting them into manual work very heavy and manual work and to to tackle this problem the british government initiated it is also tried uh, try the british government has also tried to tackle this problem and they have initiated uh, some of the legislations like apprentice apprenticeship act of 1853 and the fatal accidents act of 1853 and the workers workmen breach of contract act of 1869 employers and employ um, uh, workmen disputes act of 1860 however all these act uh, legislations came up by the given up by the uh, british government but they they couldn't solve the labor problem because they have been in uh, the all these laws were in the interest of the employers rather than the interest of the labor because of it they didn't work out on the labor problems and they, they didn't work out to tackle the problem solve the problems of the worker labor movement in india started because of it even though the legislation came the problem doesn't solve so the labor movement in india has been took its uh, took its uh, shape in the year of 1875 so when when this british cotton mill owner met the secretary of the state uh, of the state for india and he has advised the government of bombay to appoint uh, for the appointment of uh, factory uh, an investigator or else uh, first the labor commission bombay invest uh, factor factories commission to investigate into the labor conditions the fatal cause of this uh, labor movement is the fear of lancashire mill owners what the role of this lancashire mill owners is like they used to thread the indian sellers to um, sell the cloth at a very low prices because of it there is a buyers resolution has been expressed a resolution expressing the sorrow uh, against this exploitation of this mill owners by the workers of india like because of it uh, like the uh, exploitation of female and juvenile uh, labor in india all this problem has been put before the uh, british government so they have took up a, a british lab first british factories commission bombay factories commission has took place and the first labor agitation under the guidance and leadership of mr s s bengali uh, he is a social reformist and a philanthropist it concentrated on the plight of workers especially women and children this led to the appointment of first factory commission in the year of 1875 consequently the first factories act was passed in 1881 so he is a person who has started who he is the, that's why it is called as labor movement because he is a non worker who who agitated for the well being and the welfare of the working class 
that's why it is named as a labor movement the labor movement is for the workers by the non workers for the welfare of the workers by the non workers and he for his hesitation his hesitation led to the appointment of first factory commission in 1875 and the factory act was passed in 1881 so under the the next under the leadership of sri n m lokande the first labo leaders in india organized a meeting and had submitted a memorandum to the second labo for the bombay second labor commission in 1884 october and in this he has mentioned some of the demands and this memorandum has been signed around 5500 workers and he submitted to the second factory commission and he submitted to the second factory commission and uh, it was uh, it is a second labor commission kadandi it is a second factory commission so it has been he has submitted with the this memorandum to the second factory commission this memorandum has made some of the demands like all mill hands should be allowed one complete day rest that is on saturday they need a one day rest for all the workers and half an hour uh, break during the afternoon and they have to all the workers the work has to come in uh, commence at 6:30 in the morning and has to stop at sunset and the next one is the payment of wages should be made not later than 15th of month following for which they had been earned and the next the women the, uh, the workman sustaining any serious injury in the course of his work he will be disabled because of the because of the accident or something he he should receive full wage until the recovery so these are the demands that has been put forth uh, by the under the leadership of sri nm lokande the first uh, labo leader in in the year of uh, 1884 october by signing this memorandum has been signed by around 5500 workers and he has he has given these are the following demands one is one complete holiday that is on saturday half day like half an hour it's not sorry it is half an hour recess or the stoppage or a break in the afternoon third one is 15th of every month they have to pay their wages and work should commence every in every mill the work should commence at 6:30 am in the morning and should stop at sunset and the next it is not mentioned the person who is working in the uh, mill if he has uh, if he has met with any serious injury during the course of his work and he will he should be he should receive full wages until his recovery and these are the demands has been put forth and during this time and during this period of 1890 to 18 1918 so too many association has been formed in 1890 mn lokande established bombay mill hands association this was the first organized labo association this is only an association this is not a union and after that they have they have lot of association came up like in 19 1897 amalgamated society of railway servants printers union of calcutta in 1905 madras and calcutta postal union 1907 were also association formed and many more association has been formed in the beginning of this movement so this this is how the influence the leadership of lokande has been influenced to form too many unions at that time and during this moment this is very important moment because 1982 1924 this is the early stage of trade union why because it is this uh, stage is also called this phase is also called as birth of indian trade union movement this stage 1980 to 1924 this uh, phase is also known as birth of indian trade union movement this is the early stage of the birth of uh, trade union movement and how the trade union movement has been started till now we have gone through labor movement and and 
and now we have completely going through the trade union movement how this has been birth the trade even after the post war okay after the war you the as an organized movement the trade unions begin to took its shape in india in the years immediately following the end of the world war 1 after the world war 1 has been commenced it, the deteriorated living conditions caused by the first world war and exposed to, and made the people to exposed to the outside world resulted in highlighting class consciousness among the workers this provided fertile ground to the and this provided a clear path to the development of the trade union movement so this deteriorated working conditions and all this have made uh, after the broke of this world war 1 this made a think or rethink in the minds of the workers to uh, form a trade union this that's why this period is called as early trade union period so during this period there are lot of things has been happened so during this period in the year of 19th why this period is very much people got very much inspired in this period and they started very very uh, started agitations they are nearly uh, in the in from 1970 to 20 period there were nearly uh, 30 strikes has took place in the textile industries of bombay or amidabad sholapur and madras against the exploitation of the employers so th- why this has happened because in the, the, the russian revolt in 1917 has been took place and this has this has given an idea of this has this has pointed an idea in the minds of the people that exploitation of labor could be addressed or could be stopped by the political means they understood that with the revolt of with the revolt of russia and the communist party has been very much influenced with the uh, russian the communist party the, i mean to say like the communist party he, of india which has received in inspiration from the ussr captured the they thought of uh, forming into a union like ait uc has been formed with the inspiration of the of a russian revolt by the communist party and also the with the inspiration of ilo international labor organization which has been formed in 1919 and this uh, international labor organization which has came into existence in 1919 it has it has uh, which is due to peace treaty of versailles versailles in 1918 and it has uh, this has prov- profoundly influenced the india's labor movement labor legislation and labor policy and with all these influences like uh, russian revolt and uh, oh, indian international labor organization there are many trade unions has been formed trade unions or trade association has been formed at that time like amidabad textile labor association led by shrimati anasuya ben sarabhai all india postal and rms association madras labo union led by pb wadia these are all various various union came into front and the aitc has been formed which is one of the union oldest trade union federation in india was set up in the year of 1920 it was founded by lala lajpat rai joseph baptist nm joshi and divan samanlal and he, lala lajpat rai was elected as its president so this is all the inspiration of the uh, everybody got inspired with the russian movement russian revolt and uh, ilo which is profoundly influenced indian indian india's labor movement now we'll go through the phase of 1925 to 19 34 so i want to recollect one more in uh, one more uh, incident that has influenced the trade union movement is i can remember in 1920 august in the month of august mahatma gandhi's first civil obedience movement started 
this civil obedience movement has also has also added some wings and some feathers to this uh, uh, trade union movement in india why because it has provided too many young energetic and dedicated uh, and in th through inexperienced leaders to the trade union too many people has came out out of their shell with a lot of passion energy with the civil and it has in it, they have they have introduced it to the trade union movement with the civil disobedience movement in the year of 1920 so this role has impacted the trade union movement for the birth of the trade union movement and coming to the next phase in 1925 to 1934 this uh, moment this phase is called as period of left wing trade unionism so after the first world war the industrial relations concept and assumed a new dimension in the sense that workers now resort to violence and employees to lockdowns there were a numerous uh, strikes and disturbances during the 1928 to 29 as a result the government enacted the trade dispute act of 1929 to enhance the early settlement of industrial dispute this was based on the british industrial court bic act of 1919 so in this period in this period 1928 to 28 29 there enormous number of strikes and disturbances in industrial under has been took place and from the employer point of view they have started lockdowns so because of all these disturbances the government enacted trade dispute act of 1929 for the control of all this disturbances industrial unrest the trade unions act of 1929 differed from bic in it did not provide for any standing missionary for the settlement of dispute so however it was found that neither the central government nor the state government made the adequate use of this law so in this era this was marked militancy militancy like agitation and the revolutionary approach everybody has uh, become very revolutionary all the all the labors has become very revolutionary and uh, energetic okay and they are into a mood of revolution revolt against the unlawful practices it also saw multiple split of the movement at this time ait uses splits up multiple times paying uh, paying base for the formation of various organizations like national trade union federation ntuf and all india red trade union congress airtuc the trade union uh, has been formed in 1920 and in this uh, in after that from 1925 to 34 around uh, there is lot of split in this uh, unions and another split a aitc took place in 1931 at its calcutta session session when the extreme left wing under the leadership of desh pande and bt danvel broke away the and, and broke away from the aitc and they have formed into separate unions which we have discussed like all india red trade union congress and two years later the national federation of labor was also formed to facilitate unity among all the left wing organizations of the labor so as a result the aituc ai aituf and nfl merged to the national trade union federation they have merged into this atuf another important feature of this period was the passing of two acts in during this period uh, two acts has been passed one is trade unions act of 1926 and the trade dispute act of 1929 which also gave up a fillip to the growth of the trade unionism in india the former act provided and that is the former act means the first one it is trade unions act of 1926 has uh, it is voluntary registration of the trade union okay it it has formed some provisions for the registration and and provisions in the process for the registration of trade unions so and a later is the dispute trade dispute act of 1921 this latter provided for the settlement of trade unions in this phase of trade indian labor movement was described as 
period of left wing trade union and during this uh, left wing trade union there is lot of uh, partition of fragmentation has been take took place during this period in 1935 to 1938 phase the indian national congress was formed was in power in even seven provisions of 1937 this injected unity in the unions again the split trade unions has been again re reunited in at this at the next stage like at this stage of 1935 to 1938 as a result the all india red trade union congress itself with the aituc in 1935 in the before stage they have split into two different unions one is the all india red trade union and the a a n f u so and the nfl and now in the next stage they have reunited into aituc after 3 years of 19 in 1938 the trade union uh, national trade union congress ntuc also affiliated with aituc other factors that contributed to the revival of trade unions were increasing awakening among the workers to rights and change in the managerial attitude towards the trade union this uh, why they have again reunited means to bring uh, to strengthen themselves and there is also a change in the minds of the managerial attitude because of it they have again reunited and in the year of 1938 one of the most development took place was enactment of bombay industrial dispute act of 1938 this is an important provision of the act to compulsory it is an, it is to accord to compulsory recognition of unions by the employers gave a big flip to the growth of trade unionism in india so it has it has it is the uh, bombay industrial dispute act of 1930 and has uh, has given a lot of uh, importance recognition to the trade unionism in india for the growth of trade unionism in a country so in next stage of uh, trade union movement is 1939 to 1946 in this phase this is uh, like uh, world war 1 the broke of old war 2 also brought the chaos in the lot of difficulties and deterioration deteriorative conditions in the industrial front from the country so and there is a mass retrenchment to the witness during the post world war 2 this led to the problem of unemployment lot of people has been terminated from their jobs this has been led to the led to the lot of unemployment and the starvation and lot of uh, industrial unrest this compelled workers to join into unions in order to secure their jobs this resulted in the big spurt they because of this because of the uh, deteriorative conditions uh, that has been prevailed after the broke of the world war 2 the people joined they the people started joining into uh, took the membership into trade unions they have registered number of registered trade unions has been increased from 667 in 1939 to 1087 in 1945 there is a drastic increase in the number of registered trade unions in the country during this uh, during the lesa uh, during the era of lesa five so before the standing order act so before before uh, uh, like before this all before this uh, trade unionism or labor movement at the time of pre independence i can say that before this uh, what happened this lesser fire policy has been has been most probably uh, has been followed in the by the employers so during the era of lesser fire prior this uh, enactment of this uh, standing order act this policy is uh, this um, lesser fire is nothing but hair and fire policy it is nothing but the policy of hair and fire was uh, a common policy that has been followed by the employer during that uh, pre liberalization globalization era pre globalization and liberalization era so uh, during this, that era the people the employer and worker used to settle a term of employment they used to have a contract they used to sign a contract there is they used to have a contractual uh, terms between the employee either it can be implicitly or explicitly they used to have a contract between the employer and employer and whenever there is a, a need for the for the 
workmen the employer used to have a uh, have ha, have have recruitment or else they used to hire the people uh, for the for the production purpose and whenever the work is done they used to fight the employers employees this has made a lot of confusion and discontentment and lot of un industrial un un unrest and dispatry dispatic satisfactory climate has been created in in the uh, in the industry in the minds of the in the in the minds of the employees so uh, and this had deteriorated the good relations and led to the lot of strikes in the industries so because of this the uh, hiring fire policy hiring hiring fire policies whenever there is a need they used to hire the people whenever they have uh, done with the because it, it the hiring fire policies it depends upon the supply and demand whenever there is a, a production need they used to hire the people whenever there is no demand or no production they used to fire the employees and the employees employees are left unemployed so the workers are left unemployed so because of it the lot of strike has been took the year of 1946 was also marked by two important enactments one is the industrial employment why because there is no standing orders there is no standing orders for the employment so because of this in 1946 the industrial employment act has been came into force and the bombay industrial relations act of 1946 also came into force both these uh, acts provided contributed to strengthen the trade unionism in the country so after 19 since 1947 and since there is a lot of political parties has been influenced by the post independence the trade union the on the trade unions has been a lot of a lot of influence of the uh, political parties will be there on has been there on the trade unions so there is a lot of political influence okay the labo so the trade unions are increasingly preoccupied with the political issues so political issues rather than the industrial and economic matters and they become inherently weak and they have low membership and unsound finances because of their weak bargaining power and they rely increasingly on the legislative provisions so and after the independence uh, too many trade unions has been formed and all these trade unions has been has been increasingly preoccupied with the political political uh, parties or is, has been uh, they have lot of political influences on the trade unions in 19 in may 1947 the indian trade union intuc has been formed uh, by the nationalists and the moderates and was controlled by the congress party since then aitu is controlled by the communists the congress socialists who stayed in aitu at the time of formation of intu formed so during uh, aitu at the time the people who has aitu has been generally the aitu uh, uh, has been con uh, has been mostly controlled by a uh, communist and the so the congress socialists who has stayed in aitu has been in at the time in during the formation of intu subsequently they have formed into another group like hind mazdoor sabha in 1948 under the banner of uh, praja socialist party subsequently hss was split up with a group of socialist and again it has been separated uh, formed into a separate association uh, like the bms bharatiya janata bharatiya mazdoor sabha which is now affiliated to bharatiya janata party B bjp years later the communist party split into various factions forming united trade union congress and central center of trade union trade unions citu later again, again this means there is lot of fragmentation has been in took place because of the because the unions has been riddled with fragmented politicization political parties has been influenced the trade unions has been influenced by the political party lot of political influence has been in, took place in uh, took place in the trade unions because of it a lot of fragmentation has been took place in the trade union later again a group dis a group disassociation itself from the utuc and formed another 
UTUC Lenin Sarani of late with the emergence of regional parties since 1916 most of the regional parties has shown its inclination to trade union wing thus adding prolification of trade unions in the country thus it is very clear that origin and the growth of trade union movement in india is riddled with the fragmented politicization it is very clear that because of it because of uh, as the trade unions are increasing because the trade unions are increasingly preoccupied with the political issues rather than with the industrial and economic matters they become inherently weak day to day they are becoming inherently weak and they have low membership and unsought finances because of their weak bargaining power and the relay they most probably they used to relay increasingly on the legislative provisions and not not on bargaining power so political unionism divided divides the movement on political lines encourages rivalry so the political what what if a trade union is influenced by the political parties what happens the political unionism divides the movement on political lines and they develop rivalry so these are the some of the important trade unions in india aituc and the political party is also mentioned there all india trade union congress aituc established in the year of 1920 it was founded on 31st of october 1920 with lala lajpat rai as its president and the other members joshi baptist and anand joshi INTUC Indian National Trade Union Congress formed in the year of 1947 May 3rd and uh, Acharya J B Kripalani was the uh, was the president of INTUC and uh, BMS form BMS Bharatiya Mazdoor Sangh has been passed formed in the year of 1955 July 27th and uh, in the year of 1955 batto pant datto pant dengadi on 23rd july 1955 center for indian trade union citu has been formed in the year of 1917 and the political party is cpm is the it is influenced by cpm and uh, hms hind mazdoor sabha formed in december 24 1948 and uh, the political party influenced the political party is samajwadi party so now we'll go through structure of trade unions a small glance of tra- structure of trade unions so the structure of trade unions see the trade unions has been formed uh, on the basis of on the basis of purpose and on the basis of structure membership structure so again the on the basis of structure these trade unions has been again formed into two types one is a reformist trade union reformist unions and revolutionary unions let us see reformist unions and then we'll go through revolutionary unions see the classification based on the purpose the first one the trade unions has been classified according to the purpose for which they are constituted such unions may be categorized into two unions one is reformist unions and revolutionary unions reformist unions uh, generally uh, these unions the aim of these unions is to preserve preserve the capitalist society and to maintain the usual employer and employee relationship they don't want to eliminate the competitive system of production they don't want to disturb any competitive system of production neither they want to see comprehensive change nor they want to destroy the present economic political and social structure of the country they just want to have a maintain a, a relationship okay they don't want to disturb and they want to they simply modify in according to the desire and requirement of their members keeping in view the current movements of the society in accordance with the society economical or political influences they, this union will be moving they never their aim is to preserve the capitalist society and to maintain usual relations between the employer and the employer employer and the employee so they don't want to disturb the capitalist society this is a reformist union and and next is hogsy has subdivided it 
this reformist union has been again subdivided into two different unions that is by hoxi and business union and friendly union or this friendly union is also known as uplift union friendly business unions are nothing but they will be always thinking on the economic lines so they always they aim this uh, union are formed is a form of labor cooperation in which employees may the aid enter into successful business relationship with the employers they their aim is to enter into the business like only for the benefit of economic benefit only for the economic benefit such unions they uh, they represent workers in collective bargaining with the employer their aim is at securing economic advantage to their members through peaceful means however they are craft consciousness then class consciousness here craft consciousness is nothing but craft business consciousness the economic consciousness is more rather than class consciousness this is called as business union and coming to the friendly union this is quite opposite to the business union this union will be having more uh, class consciousness than that means they want to protect the interest of the workers rather than the economic benefit rather than having a economic benefit they want to concentrate on the benefit of the welfare of the workers so that's why they are more class conscious than craft conscious friendly unions or uplift unions are idealistic in nature they are very noblistic in nature and aspire to elevate the moral intellectual and social life of the workers and educate the idealistic plans for social regeneration this is one of the idol they will be having they will be binding to the law they will be binding to the legal bonding they will be a social regeneration and they will be they believe in the process of collective bargaining and they are not craft consciousness but they are class consciousness next is next type is revolutionary union this is completely this type of union is the this uh, this type of union is they will be having a, a destroying the aim of this new type of union is destroying the present structure completely and replacing it with a different order which they consider it better whichever is better they want to they want to make a better structure by distracting or destroying the present existing structure they try to replace the capitalist society with a socialist or communist type of industrial setup they want to they want to they want to destroy the capitalist type of society and want to replace this capitalist type of society with socialist or communist type of industrial setup so uh, industrial workers uh, for example this revolutionary uh unions has been formed during the uh, first world war 1 so after the work of the world war 1 uh, with the deteriorating conditions people were very much very much uh, um, inspired with been uh, inspired and they started revolting against the against their exploitation of the workers and they used to they have started forming the revolutionary unions and the revolutionary unions again divided into four types anarchist political unions predatory unions and hold up unions so the first one is anarchist unions see these anarchist unions are they having like they want to completely destroy the existing system by revolutionary means they want to destroy the aim of this anarchist is not nothing but destroying the existing economic system and they form by means of revolutionary means and this political mean political unions are nothing but according to the pol convenience of the political party power of capitalists and giving power to the workers they here the political union these union aim at changing the power through political action they they want to change the power through the political action here the aim of this union is enactment of laws eliminating the power of capitalist and giving effective power to the workmen and predatory uh, unions these type of unions has been uh, added by professor hoxie these doesn't does not subscribe to any ideology they don't have any particular idea or they didn't have a prescribed or predetermined plan they believe in ruthless pursuit of matter in hand 
which they can follow by means of bothering ethical or without bothering about ethical or legal consideration they'll just they'll just uh, like um revolution uh, terrorism terrorism which uh, they feel like whether it is uh, um, illegal or whatever the means they'll follow the means to get what they want to get so this type of union has been divided by professor hawksey these unions does not subscribe to any ideology they don't have any particular idea to be followed they'll be very rude and very revolutionary and agitative in minded whatever comes to your mind what they want to achieve they'll achieve and they, they don't know they don't follow a particular they never bother about whether they are following a legal uh, method or ethical method or anything they never bother about that they'll just be very ruthless they'll be very rude and they'll follow illegal um, consider illegal um, lines to get what they want so this has been again divided into hold up unions and gorilla unions these hold up unions uh, these are like um, unethical unfair bosses are of the organization unfair bosses are unfair employees and fair employers and employ uh, unfair employees in the organization they they join hands together they join hands together and they exploit the and exploit the customers by selling their products or the services uh, at the ex exorbitant rates and they'll get the profits so this is a hold up union hold up union this union what is that these people they form into union what who are the representatives the unscrupulous means uh, ruthless and unethical people unethical people of the workers uh, among the workers and from the employers and employees they form into they form into a group and these they are unfair and rude okay unfair and rude bosses of the work, workers organization and unfair and rude employers join together and they exploit the customers and they get the profits and the next is gorilla unions which i said they'll follow the ruthless measures to get whatever they want so these unions do not believe in cooperation with the employers they they are just opposite they are, they are opposite with the uh, hold up unions in hold up unions they will be cooperating they join hands with the employees employees and employees join hands together whereas here they won't believe in cooperation with employers they believe in exploiting against anyone whatever they can do like uh, restoring to terrorism or any other ruthless measures and they'll get whatever they want and dependent unions these unions also been added by professor hawksey and these uh, existence of this unions is dependent wholly or partially on other uh, unions or other employees they'll be always depending upon the other unions or other employees based on the membership based on the membership it has been again divided into different types one is craft union or staff union the craft union this is the one of the most popularly used uh, referred uh, and this, uh, this staff union or craft union seeks to recruit members of non mutual sectors like clerk supervisors draftman computers operators technicians uh, okay managers etc these territory sector manage to so like uh, for example um, local services health services okay all these people form into a union skilled skilled union skilled union technicians operators all these people form to a craft union an industrial union this is like um, industrial unions like an industry union is organized upon industry wise cotton industry textile industry and the examples of the the members belongs to different crafts they belongs to like um, <clears throat> they'll form the industries from various uh, textile industries 
टेक्सटाइल लैबो एसोसिएशन ऑफ अहमदाबाद राष्ट्रीय मिल मजदूर संघ बॉम्बे एंड लैबो माइंस मजदूर संघ उदयपुर और द सम ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट सच ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वर्टिकल इन नेचर बट दे आर एनरोल ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ वर्कर्स इन द इंडस्ट्रीज सो हियर व्हाट इज हैपनिंग इंडस्ट्री बेस्ड अपॉन द इंडस्ट्री वाइज दे विल बी फॉर्मिंग इनटू रादर देन क्राफ्ट क्राफ्ट मींस प्रोफेशन बेस्ड अपॉन द प्रोफेशन in this in the first uh, craft union or uh, staff union they will be forming depending upon the profession like uh, technicians the computers uh, computer uh, computers clerks into a separate union whereas in the second industrial union they'll form into textile industry software industry or else uh, oil industry mines industry they'll be forming into you industry wise they'll form into a separate union come into general union these union uh consists it doesn't have any particular city or a region the union consists of workers employed in different industries and different crafts this is the combination of uh, uh, both the craft union and industrial union in india there are several industry come region union due to concentration of some industries in particular region and in india the trade unions uh, will has been divided into two categories Uh, one is uh, they are affiliated to two different categories that is national federation and uh, federation of union national federation is a apex body that belongs to cooperation in the activities of different trade unions these are politically learned and the leadership to such federation are provided by politicians totally it will they will be controlled by the politicians the first type sort of uh, national federation will be completely coordinated and controlled by the um national federation uh, politicians and the second one is the best example for of this uh, is at the central level there will be um various union combination form into federation of union for the purpose of gaining more solidarity and strength at the central level uh, these are federal uh, federal unions will be taking place like aituc i a intuc all the central level unions come into as an example of this bank employee association all the bank employees all india railway men association all railway workers in, in the country all india electricity employee association all india means all the worker electricity workers in, in in the country will be forming into a uh, association so as to have a solidarity and strengthens uh, association to uh, to get the things whatever they want to achieve right thank you very much for the listening in the next class we'll be uh, looking into a more interesting topics like id act and the civil dispute act and trade unions act if possible we'll go through uh, collective bargaining participatory management thank you very much